What's going on YouTube? It's RJ the Fed. Uh, we're sitting out of the store right now. Uh, I got here at 6.22 a.m. and uh, we got some people ahead of us. So let's flip it around so you guys can see what we got going on. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then my chairs, five, six, seven. And we just had an eighth person roll up. Uh, there was someone else here, but they realized they weren't in the top. They went ahead and bailed. So uh, rumor has it, Stag 24A should be dropping. Hopefully the entire case gets put out. Um, or number five, there was a store earlier this week that only put out four. So if we got here at 6.22 a.m., and we don't walk away with the stag 24a because they only put out four i'm gonna be a little pissed but uh we'll we'll see how it goes guys we'll see how it goes so uh still got quite a bit of time to go wait till 10 a.m till the store opens like i said we are number five in line so pretty good position uh if they don't have stag 24a i don't expect them to have anything else worth picking up so uh probably gonna be a bust but we're gonna try to get a video of us going into the store as well uh, it's a big box store, so it won't be too much. It'll just be us basically walking in, lining up at the register, picking the bottle we want, and uh, paying for it and getting out. And then I'll do a little showcase of whatever I get, if I get anything, in the truck. So cheers, guys, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, it's uh, 10 a.m. We're going to walk in the store. We got some tickets to hold our place in line. Got number five for our spot number. Go see if they have anything. I don't know if the truck's got here yet. Got a whole line. We're going to be lining up over here on lane five. Got some whiskey out, but no one's going there. We're just immediately lining up. Going to line up and see if maybe they have something, maybe they don't. From my understanding, the truck has not come, but we'll see. Truck's not even here. We're all lined up. Let's showcase some bourbon while we wait. No truck here yet, so we'll see. Some scotch over here. Balvini 21 in the case for what looks like 289 down there at the bottom. Got Habiki for $90.79 cash price, a Yamazaki 12. Got a few things over here. Got an old pepper single malt for $49.99. Some Balcones lineage, some more single malts and Japanese whiskey. Some scotch. Let's see what all they got here. Just doing a quick browse. We know that no one's really looking for scotch except for like Adam from Major Zero. We'll swing around and showcase some bourbon though. Looks like here's a bunch of store picks. Travelers on sale. Larceny small batch. Basil Hayden. James E. Pepper. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not seeing anything too crazy. It's like some more store picks over here. Not everything, because they've got, what is this one? Ooh, they actually have Doc Swinson Zamborana. This is the first time that I'm actually seeing this in the wild for uh, $64.59. Pretty cool. G4 Blanco down there at the bottom. Not really seeing anything else too crazy. This uh, barrel proof is 131.4 for the Jack Daniels at $69.99. I guess we can go try to see if there's something else around here. Go show these cases off up front real quick. We'll look at this case too and see what they got. Some Joseph Magnus and Barrel Products, Lucky 7, Tumbling Dice 7 year pick, Balmorea for 185, Spec Single Barrel and a Guadalupe. Basil Hayden 10 year for $68.99. Larceny and Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit. Not too bad. 
let's see what's in this case. I think this is cognac. Oh, they got some tequila over here too. Let's see if there's any tequila that we should be looking at. They got the El Tesoros. Got some collection bottles in there. Don't really see anything else. Cascane, Zarepo, and Blanco. Uh, hard to see back there. I think that's pretty much it for uh, showcasing what this store has. They don't really have a whole lot for how big the store is. I mean, they've got a lot of like beer and wine and vodka and rum, but as far as whiskey, that's pretty much the entire whiskey selection. Showcase the whiskey one more time in case we missed something. Let you guys tell me in the comments if we missed anything. No Rebecca Creek double barrel Spanish oak. Always looking for that. Looking at the Iron Root Harbinger, no cigar blends. Got the Ben Holiday Rickhouse proof and the non Rickhouses. Isaac Bowman, but no John Jays. Some, what else do we got over here? Anything worth picking up? Some dark arts. French Oak Stave for $84.99. $84.99 too for the straight bourbon whiskey. The Barely Legal. They do have the foolproof green ribbon down here for $47.99. Be interested in a single barrel if we could find one. Old Granddad 114 still on sale for $17.99. Baker 7, 7 year, 5 month. Russell's 10 in single barrels and some smoke wagons. Got the flavored stuff on this side. Should have some rise coming up just in case we missed anything. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Blue notes. Looking for the river set rise. We can still find some river set rise, especially if it's at cash strength at a single barrel. A overholt. $34.99 for the A overholt. Rocket top. $75.59 cash price. Not bad. And then some Canadian stuff. Oh, and we almost missed one. They do have the seven-year Ambarana of the Dark Arts for $84.99, but that looks about it. So we're uh, we're in line, we're number five in line, so we got our placeholder. Truck's not here yet, so we'll uh, have to be waiting for the truck and see what we can get, guys, and I'll catch you guys later. Hey guys, it's RJ the Fed. Uh, I've been putting this off for a while, but I'm gonna have the discussion. It, it really upsets and saddens me to even have to talk about this, but I went to Specs the other day and I got there pretty early, like before 6.30 in the morning. And I was number five in line. People are lining up as early as 5 a.m. or even longer with the hopes of an allocated bottle such as this one or, or Stag was the, I mean, the main reason why most of those guys were there. Stag 24, I was dropping. And I, I waited till store opened. And when the store opened, uh, they didn't have any bottles yet. Uh, the truck hadn't been there yet, but they gave out tickets in line. Now, I was number five in line, and I got there at 6.30 in the morning. I had to wait three and a half hours for the store to open up, and then I waited about another hour and a half before I had to leave to go to work because it's just a bottle of liquor, guys. It's not worth your job. Uh, so we, we did take our number, and we passed it along to somebody uh, as proxy. So... That individual had spot number five in line, uh, so she was going to buy on my behalf. Regardless of whether I was gonna have her buy on my behalf or whether she was gonna have the opportunity to get the bottle for herself, I have the bottle in hand, so clearly it was proxy and it was for me, but that's two different takes right there. Is proxying allowed? Can we pay people to wait in line for us? If you step out of line, let's say you have to go to the bathroom or you want to go get breakfast or whatever the reason might be for, you know, waiting four plus hours, uh, do you forfeit your spot when you leave? Is that how it works? When you leave, do you, does everyone just move up a spot in line? Because if that's the case, then anytime someone moves uh, even like a couple inches from their, their spot, I don't see why I can't take it. Now, that's not who I am, but that's who some people are. So given that as a, a factor let's talk about proxies i mean it's in the name it's a proxy the person's buying on my behalf i had to leave to go to work so i did what i thought was a responsible thing to do and that's to you know 
go ahead and go to work and make sure I'm not late. Uh, I have a duty. So I went and did what I needed to do for work and I passed along my tag. Now, whether I would have passed along my tag or just given up my spot and let everyone move up a spot, that really wouldn't change about what I'm getting ready to talk about. This is very saddening and, and it really upsets me and, and it really pisses me off too. Um, I used to go bourbon hunting on a regular and I would wait hours, not so I could get a bottle, although hence bourbon hunting in the name, but more of the social aspect, the gathering, the uh, community. There's a lot of good people out there. <clears throat> what I'm about to talk about is the few that ruin it for the many and really give a bad name to the bourbon community. And why a lot of people want to leave the community, why they don't want to go bourbon hunting and why they don't want to put up with anybody else and their crap because it's just unacceptable. I left, I gave my ticket up. The person I gave my ticket to had already talked to a store employee along with a manager and make sure that that was okay, there wouldn't be any issues. And she was told it wouldn't be an issue. Come time that a truck gets there, about, mm, about the time I told them it would be there, probably around 12, 12.30 is what my guess was. Everyone starts to line back up. And I mean, obviously the guys that are there, when I was there, they all know who was in line. It was me and it was no longer me in line. She stepped in my place. The guy behind me, or in this case, my proxy, her, um, decided to get irate. Um, this guy was throwing a tantrum. This is a grown ass man now. He's an adult. And when I say adult, I mean, this guy's like probably in his 50s, is throwing such a tantrum that the store employees and the store manager have to get involved because this guy's causing such a scene. I know this on, on third account, obviously I wasn't there, but I, I have some pretty good reliable resources that are telling me that this was an issue. And this guy ended up cut in line. So my spot is now six and he moved up to five. And he was telling other people to do the same. So he moved up in line one spot. I don't blame my proxy for, for letting him. I would have held up my ticket and said, what numbers does yours say? Cause mine says five and yours says six, but I understand she didn't want to make it any more confrontational than he already was. He'd already been put in check by the store employees, although the position in line was no longer secured. I hear that there was five stags. I heard that he got the stag. So not only did this guy cry and throw a fit, um, it got so bad that it sounded as if maybe there was a threat of even physical violence. Like this guy wasn't going to let this happen. Like this was crazy. And this was a whole new idea to him that someone could do a proxy or, you know, pay someone to wait in line for them and took it that freaking far that he was ready to, to potentially get physical over a bottle of liquor, like something that stupid. Now, this is what number six got, which is what he should have got. I should have had a stag 24A. Now, I say I as if I stayed and waited. Um, this is also I as if I had a proxy buy it for me. If it wasn't a proxy and I let her take my spot in line, um, What's it to you? I mean, if you if you wanted to be further up in line, you would have got there earlier is what I have to say to that. A position in line is a position in line. My money spends the same as her money or his money. So I don't get the point there. From a secondary standpoint, this is a one liter bottle of Weller 12. Stag 24A, about the same. Now, I understand stag's a little bit easier to, to move than a Weller 12, but at the end of the day, it's a bottle of liquor and you're almost ready to throw what a tantrum over a bottle of liquor and you're a grown man that speaks some volumes as for some of the other people in line i'm not going to name names but i have them i know who they are um not cool not cool i mean some of the other people were acting crazy too and acting a fool as well matter of fact number seven in line was complaining just as much as number six was and regardless, if I stepped out of line and everyone moved up a spot, the outcome was still the same. She would not have gotten a stag. She would have got a Weller 12 as well. So, I mean, it's a community, guys. It's what you make it. And if you're going to be a part of the community and you're going to be that toxic trait and you're going to be an asshole to other people and even threaten violence over a bottle of liquor, like something is seriously wrong with you. This is, this is nothing. And matter of fact, to prove the point too, People buy these just to flip them. Like, I don't care. I'll freaking open my bottles. Like, I'll drink my bottles. Like, I don't get it, guys. I really don't. You know, people throw a fit <clears throat> over this. And most of the people that have a bottle won't even open it. There's so many people that have bottles on their shelf and they don't even open them. They just collect them is what they tell me. Some of them I see them selling them. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with people who sell or trade. 
I have a problem with people who sell or trade for profit. If you're selling or trading bottles and you're using that money or those bottles to get something you actually want to drink, that makes way more sense to me. That I can and will respect. Those of you that are trying to do it to, to make a profit off of someone else's back, you're the problem. You're driving up the prices for everybody else that's a consumer because you're buying them and flipping them and someone else is willing to pay them. Well, the stores know this too, and that's why they've also been raising prices as well. There's a supply and demand, and as long as you guys keep buying them the way you guys do, the demand's always going to be high, and the stores are going to see that. Distillers are going to notice that. And then from a secondary standpoint, at some point, enough is enough. These bottles have crashed. This thing used to be like $210 for a one-liter bottle of Weller 12. I've seen it moving for under 150 now. Like, they are crashing. Now, some of that's the supply. The supply is definitely way greater than it's ever been. But this conversation is mainly about the issue that happens. I did get a bottle. I did get help. I did have a proxy purchase this for me. And I thank her so much for that. Uh, but I feel bad that she had to go through that. And, and she basically had to go through that alone. Uh, she, she called me on the phone and she was upset. And she was telling me about, you know, things probably would have been different. Her husband was there because that guy probably wouldn't talk to her the same way. And I agree. But it's sad that she had to go through that. So I take some of the blame for that. Uh, for sure. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. If you've made it this far and you've seen, you know, people fight over a bottle of liquor, tell me, what do you guys think about people paying someone to wait in line? What do you think about proxies? What do you think about a line system in the first place? If you step out of line to go to use the bathroom or get breakfast, do you lose your spot? Regardless of any of those comments, an additional comment, do you think the behavior that happened the threat of an altercation of potentially physical violence over a bottle of liquor? Is that okay? I don't think so. That's enough of my rant, guys. I did get a Weller 12. It was at MSRP. It was at Specs on East Chase. I'm super happy I actually got a bottle. I, I really thank my proxy. I'm not naming names during this video, but if you were there, you know who you are. And if you weren't there, you still might know who, who these people are because um, they're in our community and they're not the people I want to be hanging around. They're not the people I want to share pores with. So uh, thank you guys. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Really, really want to hear you guys' comments. Like if you guys get this far, please leave a comment about people getting in altercations over a bottle of liquor and how silly that is. It's RJ the Fed signing out, guys, and I'll see you guys for the next one.